Our goal today is to flip the tables a little bit. Today we'd like to learn how to do forces from a difference in pressure. So up to this point, we learned how to figure out pressures based on the amount of force and the surface area. But sometimes we want to work backwards. Sometimes we want to work the other way. So we learned to find pressure. We would do force divided by area. But sometimes we want to find force based on a difference in pressures. So I'm sure you guys have seen before somebody shoot the lid off of the container just by applying a pressure inside the container. By having a greater pressure inside than outside, we can create enough force to shoot the lid off of this object. Okay? So how do we calculate the force? Well, let's take a look at our first example. So today what I'd like to show you is how we can create a force using a difference in pressures. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with this food saver container. And you can see taking the lid off is quite easy because right now there is a downward pressure from the atmosphere and also an upward pressure that is exactly the same as atmospheric pressure. When I put this on my container and then I put the container on this uh, special device and push down, we start pulling air out of that container. Inside of here, we're starting to see less and less air. And although we can't see it visually, we should be getting lower pressure inside that container. We're now going to remove the container from the device. And hopefully you understand that inside this container is low pressure. Outside the container is normal atmospheric pressure. The pressure down is greater than the pressure up. If we subtract the two, we get the difference in pressure. And then if we take that difference in pressure and multiply by the area, we'll figure out the net downward force that is being created by the atmosphere. So now when I try and take this lid off, I can't. It's vacuum sealed onto this. And what that actually means is the atmosphere itself is holding this lid in place. Okay, if I was to flip this over, again, atmospheric pressure pushes in all directions, so now the pressure is pushing up, and the pressure from inside is less than the pressure from the atmosphere. So once again, there is a net force because there's a net pressure holding this lid in place. If I let air back into this container, I will equalize the pressures between the atmosphere and inside the container. I get the pressures equal. The lid just comes right off again. Okay? So difference in pressure creates force. So what we want to think about is what is the pressure inside the container and what is the pressure outside the container? It's important that you're able to see that the air molecules left inside the container are bouncing around and causing pressure in all directions on all parts of the container. So on the lid, the pressure is trying to push the lid up. The atmosphere is trying to push the lid down. And if we look at the difference between those two pressures, we will be able to find our force. Now the pressure inside the container is low because we suck some of the air out of the container. The pressure outside the container is still the normal atmospheric pressure. We subtract those two pressures and that will go in as delta pressure. We then multiply by the area of either the top or bottom of the lid, they should be the same, and that should get us the force difference between the, pre, uh, the force pushing down from the atmosphere and the force pushing up from the air inside. So this pressure creates a force going down. 
This pressure creates a force going up, and when we use this equation, we get the net force caused by the air, both outside and inside the container. In this case, the net force will be going down because there's more pressure outside pushing down than inside pushing up. Okay, so if these were our numbers, we would subtract the outside and the inside pressure, that would go here. We'd find the area of the lid, and that would go here. And then we would just solve for force. That is the force that we would have to apply to pull that lid off of the container. That is a lot of Newtons. Many people would not be able to remove that lid given the pressure difference between the inside and outside of the container. Here's another example. Here is another example of using a difference in pressures to create a force. So this time what we're going to do is we're going to have a wooden board and right now we have the atmosphere pushing down on all spots on this wooden board but you also have the atmosphere pushing up on all spots. So this wooden board is perfectly balanced by the downward and upward pressures. So we don't notice it. But what we're going to do is take a very small section of the board and we're going to use this vacuum to lower the pressure at that one spot. And by doing that, we'll have a slightly less pressure on top than on bottom and the atmosphere will actually hold this up. And then once the pressure starts returning to atmospheric on that one little spot, we see this fall right off of the uh, vacuum hose. We may be able to not only lift the board, but we may also be able to lift this 200 gram mass. So let's give it a try. Again, you could see how that vacuum lowered the pressure enough to hold this board up. Again, it's not the vacuum so much that's holding it up as atmosphere below it pushing up with more force than the pressure above. Okay, so in this example, we only have a pressure difference at this one spot. Out here, the pressures are balanced. Over here, the pressures are balanced. But right where this is, there's going to be a low pressure pushing down and a higher pressure from the atmosphere pushing up. A lot of people would describe the vacuum as pulling up on this block of wood. But in fact, that's not true. The vacuum is still pushing down on the um, wood but just not as strongly as the atmosphere is pushing up. So you would only focus on this one section where the pressure up and the pressure down do not cancel. So we would take the difference between the two pressures, we would find the area of this little section, and we would find the amount of force difference between the upward push of the atmosphere and the downward push of the air in the vacuum hose. When we work that out, it turns out that the vacuum, at least with the pressure numbers I gave you, would be able to lift about 1.8 kilograms. And in this case, we were lifting 200 grams and the mass of the block of wood. Here is one more example that I'd like you to look at. And in this example, we have an object under water, under a fluid. So we're not just using the atmosphere, we're using a combination of the atmosphere plus the pressure from the fluid. So inside this container is some air trying to push up on the lid. The water is pushing down and the atmosphere is also pushing down on the water. 
So to get the difference in pressures on that lid, we would take the atmosphere plus the water pressure, they're all pushing down on that lid. And we would subtract from that the pressure inside pushing up on the lid. So the first thing we have to do is find the pressure from the water and the atmosphere. We use uh, fresh water, density of 1,000, planet Earth, gravitational field of 9.8. The depth, and that's measured to the top of the lid, is about 12 centimeters. We're assuming normal atmospheric pressure, and we get a downward pressure of 102 501. Okay, so then when we focus in on this, we get a total downward pressure again of 102.501. We have an upward pressure of 101.850. We subtract the two. The downward pressure is stronger, so this net force is a net downward force on the lid holding it in place. This time it's caused by a combination of the water and the atmosphere. <laughs>